Hey everybody, welcome to Revitalize Meet, where I get the opportunity to meet business owners, key influencers, and key decision makers, entrepreneurs from across the global network. And today it comes with no question being global. We've got the great opportunity to be with a lady from over the pond in southern New Jersey. She is the CEO and producer of This Is It Network. Can you please welcome us today at Revitalize Me? It's the one, yes, but as always, the only, Cheldon Rummer. Cheldon, how are you today? I am so good. I love that intro. You're going to have to come with me wherever I go. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Thanks so much for having me. There has to be a fanfare or something the next time we do it. <laughs> Just walk in through that way. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure. Thanks so much. Oh, no. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you and great to welcome you today because you interviewed me a couple of weeks back, but I said I wanted to repay the option to come and find out a bit about your business journey because it's yeah. such a time now that we're living in. You've been yeah. through such a journey over just 10 years in running yeah. your own business. Yeah. Would you mind sharing with everybody today a bit about your business journey to date? Of course, of course. So I started in 2009. I can't believe it. Um, we were a traditional agency. So PR, public relations, publicity, uh, marketing, advertising, social media, web design, graphic design. That's really how we started. And I came from the hospitality space. So I was dealing with casinos and hotels and opening huge properties with large budgets only to start my own business um, and really focusing on small business owners. Um, the fundamentals were the same, right? Whether it was a multi-million dollar budget or a couple hundred dollars, um, the fundamentals of marketing basics were the same. But what I found was that the larger entities were bold in who it is that they were. Um, they were really defined in their messaging. And what I found oftentimes is that the small business owner was not. And so in the traditional sense of services, uh, I would meet with what I would call the cupcake lady or the bicycle guy. And what happened was, is that they had a hard time, what I call finding their voice. And I would, I would get them booked for large major television here in the States or a local news channel. And I would be nervous, very, very nervous to put Emily up on a stage with a newscaster and have her tell why somebody should buy her cookies versus someone else's and without her finding the words. And so what happened over and over again was I had to figure out a way to get my customers comfortable, to get my clients more relaxed in telling their own story. As you could probably hear or feel uh, through whatever device you're listening to, I'm an extrovert. Um, I love to talk. I am not shy. I'm very boastful. Um, and so I found it tragic that these amazing people did not have a voice that could not tell their story. And so I pulled out um, a camera from, from my desk. I had been documenting things before documenting things was a thing. Um, and I started doing fake interviews with my clients. I started pretending that we were on uh, the Today Show and pretending we were on these major networks. And I automatically saw them get comfortable in telling their story. I loved it. They loved it. They found their voice. And I knew that that was it, that this would be all I would be doing for the rest of my life, telling stories and allowing for individuals to feel comfortable doing so. And so this is it network stemmed from that, my ability to help people in telling their own stories. And so now I interview one to five people per day um, from all across the globe in hopes of connecting these remarkable people to inspiring stories and giving them an outlet to tell theirs. And it's just been so, so super fun. And so I get, I get to meet new friends every day of my life. So that's not a, not a bad gig. It sounds like a pretty decent gig indeed. And I think it's great because there's so many people out there now that have that internal story, that hidden gem that yeah. they're wanting to talk about. And sometimes they haven't got the voice or the platform to oh. put it out there. And I think it's great that you've embraced that and you're giving them the, the ability and more of a, a natural, comfortable setting where they can they can share their story. Because I think as people I speak to recently, it's, it's all in the detail. It's all in the conversation. Yeah. And when you start hearing their story, you go, wow, I didn't know that. And it just opens yeah. up so many doors of opportunity for people so congratulations on doing that for the past 10 years creating the idea and embracing it and driving it forward and um, with everything you've done what's been your biggest achievement 
And yeah. why has it been your biggest achievement, Sheldon? Yeah. So for me, we went from agency to platform or digital medium. And what we struggled with was the competitive nature of the space. And so how with limited budget, with limited resource, you know, a lot of enthusiasm, but limited budget and limited resource, how, do, how are you competitive within the space? And one of the things we're the most proud of is the community, right? So media outlets and digital platforms are led by content. But what we do is we marry content, community, and connections. Those three Cs um, really selfishly create an opportunity for there not, to your point, not only there to be videos and interviews, but there are to be conversations based around those videos and interviews. We believe that that's the missing link in media today, right? How do we combine, you know, in a positive, safe environment, ability for you to meet people, right? Very seldom do you get to meet and connect with the host of the cooking show, right? Very seldom do you get to meet and connect with the guest on the talk show. And so what we have done is really opened ourselves up to create those connections based and create a community based on that content. And the fact that that has actually happened has gone from theory, hey, this may work, to, oh my goodness, we see it happening. We see the guests on the show connecting with community members and community members collaborating with coaches, guests, or hosts that are on our network. And we just sit back and are the viaduct to make that all happen. And that is where our value lies. And so I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud that somebody who is in Portland can connect with someone who's in Philadelphia, who can connect with someone who's in Toronto. And not only can they be entertained by them, but they can actually do business and they can actually, you know, really start to participate and connect with them. And I think that that's awesome. So I'm most proud of really going from content to community to connections. I think it's interesting the way you say about the, the content, the community, the connections, especially on a global coverage now, because, you know, I'm sitting in, in Glasgow, Scotland, yourselves yeah. in, you know, Southern New Jersey. Yeah. Um, that type of bringing those connections together starts opening up so many doors of opportunity. It's unreal and it's a great achievement. Testament to yourself and your team that you've got around you that's brought that to fruition, you know, making it happen, making it happen for people who um, wouldn't normally talk about that and, and sharing that. So really well done, Sheldon. Oh, um, thank you. We've had a bit of a yay, right? I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, right? We've had a lot going on. For sure. Um, and we've had to adapt and embrace other areas. We talked, you know, about the connection, talking about the global yeah. coverage. You have spoke a bit about the adaption that you've made to your business. Is there any other adaptions that you've made to embrace the virtual yeah. network even further? Oh my goodness, absolutely. I call it BQ before quarantine. So BQ, um, I wasn't, we weren't as digital by any stretch of the imagination. We had a brick and mortar studio in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is not far from us here in South Jersey. And we would go there every day and I would hold my interviews in that studio. And I was obsessed with it. I have to tell you, my new friend, I loved my studio. I loved the studio experience. I loved people coming in and us taking pictures and us sitting shoulder to shoulder. And that was really part of it. Again, the energy that I share is a big part of not only who I am, but the business that I've created. And I was devastated. The first two weeks of quarantine were not cute, my darling. I did not have my lashes on. My hair looked crazy. I was a mess um, because I didn't know how I was going to really take it, that energy and translate it into a new space. Because at that point, I wasn't even embracing the digital space. It was just, what is next for us? And, you know, as, as I do, I'm surrounded by really amazing people who, who tell me to like suck it up and, you know, figure it out. You're a smart girl, figure it out. You're a smart woman. You know, what's the next move? And I really bear down and I said, you know, where, how can I reach the most people? How can I share my energy in a different way? And I just dove in to this digital space. And I made a commitment that every day I would wake up and that I would stream every single day. So I would do a live every single day, Monday through Friday. And a lot of that was for the woman that did not put her lashes on and did not comb her hair. It was an accountability um, to me to show up for myself. And in doing so, I began to grow our audience that was really fixated in the Philadelphia hyper-local space into this global entity where we were connecting with people from all over the globe that had these like-minded remarkable stories. And I would have never done that 
um, if things kept going on the treadmill the way that in which they did, you know, I was lucky to be safe at home. You know, those in my life, you know, are, are in my immediate family are, are safe and healthy. And so I utilized that time as saying, if somebody gifted me 12 months, right? If somebody said, hey, you have 12 months to work on your business, go, go for it. Um, at the time, I thought it was only three months, but it ended up being a lot longer than that. And, and I utilized every moment to say, how can I increase my reach? How can I provide more quality? And what has come from that is, is these amazing, these amazing connections in this beautiful community. So it was a blessing in, in, in this difficult time. Um, once I put my lashes back on. I can appreciate how bad it would be not to put your lashes on. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but in regards to like, you touched on a really good point there, accountability, you know, yeah. making it happen. Yeah. I mean, that must have been at the time to adapt to doing that. That just must have been right. I'm going to just go for this. Did yeah. you schedule certain times of the day when you did that? Was it the yeah. first thing in the morning? It, it was. It was 11. Yeah, it was 11 o'clock Eastern, our time here in the U.S. And I and I made I made a commitment that I would show up in that way. I also made some additional scheduled times in my calendar where I would do certain things that I would reach out and I would connect with people on social platforms or I would be able to send certain emails. I, I gave myself the discipline. Um, I was a collegiate athlete, division one athlete here in the States. And so my I had that discipline that, I mean, let's be honest, it's, I'm 20 years removed, so I'm not claiming to be an athlete, but I remember the discipline that I had at that time. Um, and I applied those, those skills. I applied the discipline of it. Okay, this is what you're going to do in order to get to where it is that you want to be. And it was hard because the world was distracting. There was so much going on. Every day was something new. Every day it was, you know, different things to follow and catch up on and emotions that went into it. But I needed to have things in my schedule that were, that afforded me some sense of structure. And I knew that going live every day at 11, you know, having specific times in order to execute specific tasks, all of that helped me uh, become steadfast to my goals and, and hold on to where it is that I wanted to, to, to go. And so that was really, really helpful for me. Brilliant. I think it's when you've got that structure in place and you know what you've got to do each day to yeah. make it happen. Again, you touched on a great point there as well, setting up those goals. Yeah. Many people in networking as such do, don't really put the goals into place mm -hmm. of what they want to achieve. Oh. A regular routine that they're going to be consistently delivering regularly into that yeah. as well. And that's really great the way you put those goals into place. So again, thank you for sharing that. It's some great points to everybody that you're watching and listening. Have them written down and listen to, listen to it again and write it down again if you can. Now, we talked about goals and yeah. we talked about business networking. Yeah. If everybody's watching and listening today, what would be your golden top three tips yeah. for business networking online? What would you share with oh, everybody? So you get your pens at the ready, everybody. Yeah. Child are going to leave these. I love, I, I love, I love. So I want you to identify, number one, I want you to identify your unique equation. And my unique equation um, is who you are, what do you want, and why do you deserve it? Those are the three things you must know for your unique equation. And you must really understand this. Now, give yourself an opportunity at any point in the day to sit down and be like, who am I? Meaning, I want you to really own your occupation, own what it is that you're doing. So many of us are loose with it, right? And so in turn, those that are hearing us, those that are gaining our information are also equally loose with it. And we can't really build a foundation on things that are loose. So you must have a clear understanding as to who it is that you are. You must also identify what it is that you want. Really, what do you want? Do you want to be able to sell more of your service coaching packages? What then own that, right? I think I've, I've spoken to so many people. They're like, well, you know, if people buy or I'd love if more people, uh-uh. It can't be this kind of loosey-goosey scenario. It must be intentional. You have to identify what it is that you want. So again, identifying who you, it is that you are. And what I mean by that, if I wasn't specific enough, is identify your expertise, what are you good at, right? What lane do you drive in well, right? Avoid the lanes that you're not good at and really own who it is that you are in your expertise. Follow that up with what it is that you want. Be really clear. If you want to be able to sell more widgets, as we say in business school, or you want to sell more products or services, then say that. 
then own that. Wake up every morning knowing that that is a fact, um, as opposed to being loose with it, because loose thoughts get loose results and, and they don't pay the bills. <laughs> and then last thing is really about knowing why you deserve it. Going back to that who you are, what makes you an expert in that category? What makes you really the one that should be the one that really gets that client or gets that customer? So often we don't want to, what I call brag boldly, right? We find it that we're being conceited or that we are, you know, being boastful unjustifiably. But we know that there are lesser people that share who they are, that are clear on what it is that they want that justify why they deserve what they want continuously. And they leave us out of things in which we have earned simply because we're not prepared to share our unique equation. So for me, I really want you all to sit down with yourself, enjoy it even, um, and really identify who it is you are. What are you good at, right? What can you own solely that no one can take away from you? Understand what it is that you want really, what are the benchmarks in, in, that you will deem yourself successful if I close X amount of deals, if I sell X amount of product? And then really, how can you share why you deserve it? Make sure people know that you can no longer be this hidden secret, folks. I know that you want to be coy, but lesser people are pounding on their chest as, as it relates to their mediocrity. And unfortunately, we're, being, we're losing to those that haven't earned it because simply because they're opening their mouth to share it. So who it is you are, what it is you want and why you deserve it. I call it your unique equation. Love that. I hope you've all written that down. <laughs> One to three, Yay. keep it somewhere visible and use it Please. or embrace it. And one of the big things you put on there is the guru sense. Yes. Yes. Be the guru of your industry. I love that. Yeah. Just to finish with that one. And just yes. tell people what you do. Don't be yes. shy to, to say what's out there. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Chelm. Some real golden nuggets uh, in there to share. A treasure trove of thank golden you. top three tips. So thank you. Now, we talk about self-reflection as well, and we talk yeah. about that quite a lot. And I've been looking yeah. at that recently a lot over the last few months. Yeah. I think we all have. Yeah. What have you done recently that, you know, what have you learned from self-reflection? What have you learned from training or knowledge from other connections we talked about meeting so many people on a global platform now so yeah. would you mind sharing your thoughts on that of course of course this has been a long as you mentioned a 10-year journey and of course a career before you know as it relates that got me here um and i think that in that we tend to dwell on the valleys you know, a lot longer than we should. I think we tend to, to really focus on the things in which did not go well or correctly. And we don't focus on the 10 comments that said that they enjoyed the event. We focus on the one comment that said that things didn't start on top, whatever it is. Um, and for me, what that has done for me is that it has held me back in moving forward. So I'm a planner um, and I love to tweak like the majority of us entrepreneurs are out there that like to get things right and, and find that perfectionism is a distraction and a delay, right? It is not about me. It is about my fear of the reaction of what I've created, right? And for at least that's how I see it. And so for me, my reflection has been really on this affirmation that I say every morning now in it is complete and it is worthy. I have been working on my platform for years now, and there's always that sense of like, if I do one more thing, or oh, if I add one more thing, or oh, it's not right, quite ready, which is a stall tactic for me moving forward. And it took me a long while to realize that things were complete, but I was, I was tweaking it as a delay to my own success, right? And, and it was a distraction. It won't, all, it won't be perfect but it, there will be progress. And so the reflection for me was put it out into the world. And every time I do that, every time I put it out into the world, when I feel like I could have added a paragraph or deleted one more thing, the reaction, because it's authentic and because my energy is, is pure and positive, has been pure and positive. So for all of you out there, don't dwell on the valley. You know, you can visit there from time to time, but you can't live there. Um, and then I want you to be able to move forward and to do, um, and every time that I do that, every time that I say, you know, it is complete, it is worthy, send the email. It is complete, it is worthy, 
just ask. Um, beautiful things happen on the other side of that. And that's been hard for me. Uh, I mean, and not an overnight scenario, but now that I've come to, to this conclusion, it's beautiful things have, have resulted from it. Yeah, I think you can tweak it too much sometimes. Yes. That you just go, just like, I'm like, what am I doing? Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and the world is forgiving and the world is forgetful. And, you know, we hold on to it more than, than those that follow fan and like us. I think that the, you know, we must give ourselves permission to evolve and give ourselves permission to test things out and to see how they go. And, and the only way to do that is for them to in fact go. Um, and, and, and be able to grow from there. And so that's been a journey for me, difficult as it may, it has been, um, I've found myself in a positive space on the other side. Well, I love that as well. It's like, you've got to feel uncomfortable being or comfortable being yes. uncomfortable. Yes, I say that all the time. I say that all the time. There's loads of people do that. It's, it's you know, try that sometime, try to feel yeah. the uncomfortableness because then you'll start feeling comfortable how you're doing it. It's yeah. the routine, that daily routine in the morning, right? Video didn't feel great to start with, but you had to yeah. do it. But that's yeah. why you got comfortable being in that scenario and then doing it that way. And, yeah. you know, embrace the testimonials that people are telling you. Those, those little niches that go, well, it wasn't what I thought it was. Tell me why it wasn't then. So mm -hmm. I can fix it and evolve it and make it better for Absolutely. going forward. So brilliant Absolutely. points on that self-reflection there, Sheldon. Thanks for sharing that. Of course. So with everything you've been through the last 10 years, everything that's going on at the minute, we're, you know, embracing the virtual yeah. network, we're expanding the global network itself. Yeah. What's around the corner? What's yeah. the next door of opportunity? What's the next step for Sheldon yeah. Mummer and This Is It Network? Yes. So yeah, absolutely. And so I have, you know, obviously found the lashes. I put them back on. I've dove into that digital space, but I do miss obviously that that shoulder to shoulder scenario. And I believe that there are the next phase of things for events for all of us, as well as for programming and the combination between media and events. And how do we you know, create these hybrids is really what our focus is. And so our focus is to continue to connect our global audience and then also meet people where they are and have them visit us. And hopefully you'll do that um, and have folks all, you know, come together in that way, whether we're in the one room or we're connected through streaming. So for me, it's really about finding an ideal home where we can do that. So we can be able to create these amazing in-person events that connect people globally. And so 2022 looks amazing for us. We have five large scale events that we'll be doing in the, an array of different categories to bring people together, um, both online and offline, um, as we continue to tell these remarkable stories to inspire our audience. And so that was really important and, and getting into the technology space, right? Finding partners and vendors that know more than I do that can teach me about what's available and accessible to us to help us in doing that. I think, again, uh, community is everything. And the power and the value that we have as a network will be dependent on our ability to connect people um, and, and create a community and, and common conversations and goals. And so that's really what we want to do more of. Um, more opportunities for people to meet both online and offline. And so that's what our 2022 goals look like. So we are churning it up in 2021 to ensure that we get there. Brilliant. I love the community essence of it all. You know, yeah. that's where the, the magic really lies is, the, yeah. is the, the detail in the conversation and the relationships that people build with one another. Um, <laughs> that's when opportunities start yeah. to be created. It's not just about the business. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the support level that you're getting within the community that you're part of. And yeah. I've, I've learned that for many, many years. Um, yeah. We've been part of what I've been involved in from networking to business development and sales, et cetera, as well. It's always about the relationship that you're building within yeah. that. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Now, everybody's watching and listening today. They can feel your enthusiasm. They can <laughs> sense your energy. They can probably sense it through the speakers <laughs> or through the screen. How can everybody who's watching make contact with Sheldon, organize a virtual cup, I stick the kettle on and uh, enjoy a one-to-one -one with you? How can they make contact with yourself, Sheldon? 
please, please, please. I love to say follow fan and like me, please. Um, you can log on to thisisittv.com. That's our corporate website. So you'll have to find all of the things in which we're up to, um, various ways in which you can get in contact with us. You can watch all of our latest segments, episodes, and courses can be found on thisisit.tv. And for inspiration and a little motivation, you can do so by following, fanning, and liking everywhere you find at This Is It TV. Please, please do so. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on every social media platform. You simply can't miss me. <laughs> and it would be highly recommended that you make the contact. You organize the one-to-one -one meeting. You start to follow and you start to like and you start to share all the content. Again, there's a smorgasbord. Love that world. There's a, a word, sorry. There's a treasure trove of information in there with This Is It Network as well. And there's a sense there to build community. So really to everybody, highly recommend you organize that one-to-one -one or connect with Cheldon via the LinkedIn, the virtual network itself. Well, Cheldon, thank you so much for today. I really appreciate you sharing your story, your journey, and some great hints and tips in there. I hope people have got their pens out, pencils out. I mean, writing corpus notes down in their notebooks for themselves. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so spoiled. I'm so excited to have you as part of our community and to continue to stay connected with you as well. So thanks so much for allowing for me to join you. Thanks again, Sheldon. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who's been watching and listening today. We look forward to welcoming you back to the next Revitalize Meets, where, as always, I get the great opportunity to meet business leaders, business entrepreneurs, key influencers from across the global network that we're living in right now. As always, for me and Cheldon, make sure you stay healthy, stay safe. And as always, remember everybody, keep connecting. Take care. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye for now.